Hey everyone, welcome back to the DaVinci Resolve Academy. This is our sixth lesson in the color series, and in this one we're going to be talking all about shot matching. So I've got this three camera interview setup that was filmed with a Sony, a Panasonic, and a Canon. The white balance was set exactly the same and there was no color chart, but you can see there are some pretty big differences between each camera angle. And especially in a three camera interview setup like this, it's going to be very important to make sure that each angle looks as close as possible because if the audience can tell there's a difference between the colors, every time the camera cuts, it's going to be very distracting. Okay, so real quick, you may know about the shot matching feature right here. If you right click a different clip on your timeline, you can choose shot match to this clip. But in my experience, this never works. If anything, it gets me further away from the shot. You can see in this example, it made the background a lot more kind of magenta purple where, uh, you know, obviously these are both log images. I haven't done any color management yet, but you can see just how off the shot matching feature works. Maybe it works for different scenarios, but for something like this where you're matching multiple angles together that's all in the same scene, uh, this method will not work at all. And even if I set up a simple color space transform just to get my footage into Rec. 709, you can see I've done the same over here with my Sony shot. If I add a node either downstream or before my color space transform, uh, you can see it still doesn't really do anything. In this case, it looks way off. Uh, so to me, this is just not even an option at all. You can see I'm going to try the same thing this time before my color space transform. I'm going to right click the Canon shot, shot match to this clip. And, you know, like I said, this is not an option. So we're just going to do everything manually. So before we do any color correction, let me go ahead and set up my overall color management. So I'm just going to drop on a color space transform here. And this time, instead of going straight into Rec. 709, kind of going back to lesson two, I'm going to put this into a common working space that way all the controls feel consistent and it's going to make matching each shot a lot easier. Now let's go ahead and relabel this node DaVinci Wide Gamut so that this is easy to see. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this node and then hop here over to the timeline area. Now anything you do in the timeline area will actually impact everything on your timeline. So let's go ahead and paste in this node. But instead of going from S-Log to DaVinci Wide Gamut again, I'm going to swap the inputs and for my output space, I'm going to output to Rec. 709 and let's just say Gamma 2.4, keeping this pretty standard. So let's relabel this node Rec. 709. And now, like I said, everything in this timeline, all of these clips will get hit by this final color space transform and everything will get condensed down into Rec. 709, Gamma 2.4, okay? Now I'm gonna add another node just before this color space transform. And this is gonna be our overall look node. I'm not going to do anything to this node just yet, but we're going to revisit this and kind of apply, you know, kind of a global master adjustment onto everything before it gets squished into Rec. 709. All right, so let's go back over here to the clip section and I'm just going to add a couple of default nodes. So this first one, we're going to work on our exposure. And then after that, we might want to adjust our contrast. And then finally, we're going to work on our balance. And let's add another node here just for any other kind of tweaks and adjustments. Now, before I do anything with these nodes, I'm just going to go ahead and select these other two clips here and just middle click this one over here. And that's just going to apply the same node tree to each of these shots. So we have to change the settings of our color space transform here. So this was filmed in Panasonic V-Log. So let's go over here to our input space and I'm just going to select Panasonic V Gamut and Panasonic V Log for the input gamma. And for our Canon shot, this was filmed in Canon Cinema Gamut and C Log 3. Okay, so now everything is properly converted from their camera color space into DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then again, at the very end of our timeline area, everything is getting condensed back out to a standard Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 color space. So like I said, we're going to work on our exposure first. And I actually want to work on this wide shot before I get into these tighter angles over here. And this is a good rule of thumb because, you know, this shot right here kind of has all of the elements that appear in the other two angles. And even if you're working with, you know, a different kind of scene, it's a good idea to set a kind of master look based on your wide shot and then kind of go through and fix your inserts, your tighter angles to match the wider shot. It's really difficult to do it the other way around, you know, because in this example, we don't really see all of these green tones in this plant. We don't see the other person on camera. So if we spend too much time trying to get her to look as good as we can, we might have completely forgot about everything else in the scene. 
So generally speaking, it's good to work kind of on these wider hero shots and then kind of work your way down. Now this is not a necessary step, but it's something that I personally like to do. So I have a BenQ monitor and if I hit this button, it will actually make my monitor black and white and it keeps the same luminance and gamma. And for me, it just helps me focus on just the luminance and the contrast. So I'm gonna pop out my waveform here and make it really big. And I just wanna worry about the contrast and the overall exposure. And for me personally, having a black and white image to go off makes it a little bit easier to focus on that task specifically and not get distracted by you know any kind of color hues. Like I said, this is optional. You don't have to do this. And if you don't have a monitor that can go into black and white, you could always come down here to a node downstream and just lower your saturation all the way down. Just kind of walking you through my personal workflow here. All right, so with my monitor black and white and I got these nice big waveforms right here, I've got my exposure node selected. I'm just gonna start using my offset wheel right here to kind of look at the image and kind of see where I think it needs to live. And I also have my qualifier tool enabled right here. And in your scopes, if you click on the three dots and have display qualifier focus, this will let you hover over areas of your frame here. And you can see this little circle that pops up on your scopes. And so with this, I'm gonna kind of look at the skin here, this forehead area, and make sure that this is pretty much where I want it. So I'm gonna kind of lift up the offset here to get that exposure a little bit higher up. And I'm also looking here at this horizontal line that goes straight across here. Now this little hump that comes in the middle of the frame, that's obviously the table, which doesn't appear in these other two angles. So I'm not really gonna anchor my exposure adjustments based on this little waveform. So I'm really looking at this background wall and you can see it's a little bit brighter in the center and kind of vignettes naturally around the corners. And these two angles are more facing the sides of that psych wall a little bit more. So these two side angles should actually have a slightly darker background than the middle of this background. It should match on the sides over here, okay? I'm gonna leave my exposure here for now and let's go ahead and go over here to the contrast node. Let's just add a little bit more of this contrast and maybe push our pivot. Looks like it needs to go a little bit higher somewhere around here. Now, if we turn those two nodes off, you can see we're just adding a little bit of contrast, a little bit of this exposure increase. And at this point, I'm gonna just copy this exposure node and let's go ahead and right click here and save a still. That's gonna appear in our gallery right there. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to the next shot and I'm just gonna paste that contrast node onto this contrast node. And that's gonna give me the same contrast. Most likely I'm gonna to have to change this anyway, but hopefully it will kind of get me a little bit closer. So I'm gonna to go to my exposure node and let's turn on the split view here. And I just want to kind of position this so that I can see this guy here in both frames and the background. And let's just lift up our exposure a little bit here on our offset wheel just to kind of match the background. If we zoom in here, that looks pretty close. Okay. Now, one thing that helps out with this kind of split screen layout, if it's kind of difficult to see what you're after in the same frame, you can come over here to the node sizing area and you have five different options here. So the input sizing, that's gonna be your frame here. So you can adjust the pan and kind of move this left and right. And then you also have this reference sizing right here. And with this one, you can also pan the reference. And this just lets you frame up each shot side by side so that you can you know, see every part of the image at the same time. You can also click on this split screen button here. And when this is selected, you've got a couple different options. So we can select neighbor clips, for example. And this will bring up all three of our angles here. Uh, you can see my node sizing is still panned over to the right. So let's reset that. Now you can see we've got all three angles here on the same screen and our scopes will actually reflect this. So you can see there is a little bit of a difference here. Now I'm not trying to match this edge here with this edge here because you know this represents the right side of the screen, which is actually closer to the middle of the psych wall back here. So I'm really kind of looking at this left area here and just trying to make sure that it's lined up roughly with the right side of this frame. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off my split screen and let's just kind of flip back and forth. And so far to me, those look like they pretty much match. 
Let's go ahead and move on to the Panasonic shot. Now again, I'm going to paste that contrast node and then move back into my exposure. Let's bring back our split screen. This time I'm going to push this over to this side. And you can see here's a better example where I might want to move my input sizing over a little bit so that we can fit our reference and we can see her in both frames. Okay, so now it looks like we've got to lower the offset just a bit. And it looks like our Panasonic shot maybe lacks a little bit of this contrast. So I'm just going to push my gamma down a bit here and then push the gain back up and kind of push and pull these two controls and see if we can get a little bit closer in our exposure. So if we turn off that split screen, let's reset our sizing. Now if we flip back and forth so far, at least in black and white, uh, these all match. So of course we can always come back and readjust things downstream, but let's go ahead and turn our monitor back into color and move on to the balance node. Now with my scopes, I'm going to use two different scopes for this one. I like to have my parade and my low pass filter. I like to have this turned on. This will kind of get rid of any of the color noise that could, you know, give you the wrong impression of your colors in these three channels. And then I want to have my vector scope over here on this side. Okay, so in terms of color, let's just kind of look through and see what we notice about each of these angles. So it looks like in the Sony shot, our skin tone is definitely a lot more green and kind of yellow. I'm looking at her sweater here. It's also leaning a little bit more towards yellow. In the Canon shot, uh, this looks too saturated and more magenta red. And then in the Panasonic shot, this was definitely the most red out of the three. So again, I'm going to go back to my wide shot and try to get this shot to look properly balanced as best I can. And then I'm going to match the other two angles to this wide shot. So it definitely looks too green. Let's just go to our offset here and I'm going to pull the green down a little bit, maybe the blue as well. It's going to make it slightly more magenta. Now something I want to do with this particular shot, I might want to actually rotate the hues but I don't necessarily want to use the hue slider here. Of course, I could do this. It's a little bit of a quick and dirty solution, but you know, this is a little bit too aggressive. So I'm actually going to use the RGB mixer and let's just sort of audition the red output here and see if we can rotate the green and blue inputs into our red output and see if we can sort of shift those colors around. So with my mouse, I'm just hovering right over this green channel and just nudging it up with the mouse wheel and let's go down by that same amount on the blue channel and you can see if i turn that on and off we're just subtly rotating the red channel slightly let's keep going a little bit further with this so we're at 0.21 and negative 0.21 and you can see that is bringing my skin tone back into a more natural looking area especially this plant back here too you can see if i turn that node off this is looking a little bit unnatural. I'm pretty sure that is a fake plant and it definitely looks like a fake plant on camera. So after this subtle little hue rotation using the RGB mixer, that's just adding a little bit more, you know, warmth and life to this plant and kind of the same with the skin tone. Now this definitely looks too saturated. So let's go back over here to our primary wheels and I'm just going to push the saturation down. Now we're also pulling some of the colors out of these neutral areas but we can push the color boost up kind of in the opposite direction. So by kind of using these two sliders against each other, we can try to maintain an even level of saturation while dealing with these overly saturated uh, skin tones. And uh, I might want to play through this just to see how it looks in motion. I'm going to go ahead and move into the adjustment node. I'm just going to try out the hue versus hue curves. So let's just add some of these anchor points here. And with my red, I'm just going to see if I can push this maybe a little bit closer to red. Let's go into our hue versus sat. And I'm just going to pull out a little bit of that red as well. So that's making our skin a lot more natural looking. Now I might want to also brighten up the skin, but typically I don't really get the best results doing that using the hue versus luminance. I might want to try it first because I'm already here, but you know, you can see if I push this up a little bit, 
it might look okay, but I'm actually going to try using the color warper instead because generally I think it is a little bit nicer and more friendly to my footage. So I'm just going to click an area of the skin here and let's just use the luminance and just subtly brighten that up. I would say for the most part, this shot looks nice and natural. So at this point, I might want to use this angle here and hop back over here into the timeline area and kind of fine tune my look. So let's go back to the regular curves right over here. And I'm just going to drop the output down slightly and move the low point up a little bit here. Now, I just want to create a really soft contrast. So let's go here and turn on the editable splines. And I'm just going to grab these little spline handles and just add a very subtle S curve. And we can go into each of these channels and kind of push a custom color contrast curve here. So let's take out some red from the shadows, maybe add a little bit of red to the highlights. I'm going to go into the green channel and kind of do the same thing. All right. And then the blue channel. Let's see what it looks like if we actually drop some of the blues out of the highlights. That's going to make it a little bit warmer. And I'm just going to kind of fine tune this blue channel here. OK, so I think that's pretty good for our look node. Again, we're not going for anything super stylized or cinematic in this example. And all three of these angles will pass through the same look node. And this is going to help kind of homogenize our whole look. So that way, if we work on the Panasonic shot, for example, it should still kind of look natural passing through that extra look in our timeline area. We've got our wide shot pretty much settled where I like it. Let's pick a good frame and save this as a still. And now we're going to try to balance these other two side angles to this wide shot here. Okay, so you can definitely see in the Canon shot compared to our wide shot here, the blue is going to need some adjustment, our skin tone, the jacket. It's, overall, it's a lot more saturated and warm. And as we swipe across using this split screen, we can also look at our vector scope and see that this Canon shot is pushing way further up here towards red. So let's just use our offset and kind of bring this back. Let's lower the saturation just like we did in the Sony shot and increase the color boost a little bit. And I'm pretty much just going to use my primaries here in my balance node to get kind of a rough balance. Try to get these two shots looking a lot more related. Now in my adjustment node here, we're probably going to have to do pretty much the same thing we did in the wide angle. So I'm just going to push the red hues maybe a little bit more towards that yellow. They're looking kind of too magenta. Let's also add a red anchor for the saturation and just kind of drop that. Now the blue is looking more cyan. In our wide shot here, we've got this blue spike hitting right about here. So that means in our Canon shot, we might want to push this a little bit more. Let's flip back and forth. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this green kind of hue out of the jacket. Now, if we swipe back and forth, I would say that for the most part, those look identical. So let's call that good. Let's move on to the Panasonic shot. Now, again, this one is a lot more red. So let's pull our offset down just a bit towards kind of the green blue area. Let's take some red out of the gamma. I'm going to drop the overall saturation and then add a little bit of color boost. Let's bring up both of these side by side. And we're just going to kind of repeat the same process. And in real life, I would actually leave this project for a while, let my eyes kind of relax and reset and then come back to this just to see if anything stands out. But in this case, I think it all matches. So again, you want to kind of work in passes. I think it makes more sense to do exposure and contrast before your color. Some people prefer doing color before contrast. There's not really a wrong or right way to do it. But exposure should come first because, as I mentioned earlier, that's going to be more noticeable between different shots. And then once you have the exposure and the contrast balanced, it's going to make the color adjustments a lot easier and everything will kind of fall into place. Hope you got something out of this lesson. We've got one more lesson before we do our complete color grading workflow. So I hope you look forward to that one and we will see you next time.